Very quick bonus video for you this week. I've got some exciting news about the original Octopus Go tariff. If you've got a solar or battery system, you may be aware that you can combine various import tariffs from Octopus with different export tariffs. And I've done a video about that. I'll link that above my head. Um, but in that video, I explained that with regular Go, you could only get the outgoing light export tariff, which only paid eight pence per kilowatt hour. Whereas now, you can get the outgoing octopus at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So this used to be the tariff you could get in combination with uh, Intelligent Go, but uh, you weren't able to get the, the full fat version with regular Go. But as you can see, if I scroll down here, uh, the uh, outgoing light has vanished from this particular matrix here. But now you can see that if I scroll down to about here and look at this box here, you can now combine the import regular Go tariff with outgoing octopus at 15 pence per kilowatt hour, which means you can now charge your batteries up overnight at uh, 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour and then export uh, during the day at 15 pence per kilowatt hour if you so choose. So of course Octopus made that change literally the day after I'd published my latest rule of thumb tariff video update um, which made that video uh, essentially out of date immediately. Um, but this is the chart uh, I showed in that video for the export strategy which um, is probably the best option for pretty much all of the tariffs now, now that the uh, the change has been made to the export tariff for Go. And you can see that this is the old um, outgoing light tariff combined with um, regular Go and the blue line um, becomes the worst tariff um, pretty much for most of the year except in winter. If you're not able to get Intelligent Go, um, regular Go is actually a pretty good tariff for the winter and that's what I'm doing because I can't get Intelligent Go at the moment. But what happens if I change the export tariff from outgoing light to uh, regular outgoing? You can see that that blue line becomes significantly better for a much bigger chunk of this chart. So this uh, ratio of generation to consumption, which means that um, for us, if we're not still not able to get Intelligent Go, um, sticking with regular Go is actually a good option for a good fraction of the year, right up until the point that maybe around a generation to consumption ratio of about 1.25, Intelligent Flux might become um, a better option, um, but that, was, that won't happen until um, the height of summer for us. So uh, it actually looks like sticking with regular Go might be a good option for um, a good chunk of the year for us, and it might not even be worth switching to a different tariff in the summer. Now, um, obviously, the um, import rate for Intelligent Go is still slightly better than regular Go. You get 7 pence per kilowatt hour uh, overnight with Intelligent Go compared to 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour with regular Go. But now that the export rates are the same, um, you can see that they'll, uh, they'll stay parallel to each other for regardless of the generation to consumption ratio. And I calculated that the difference between these two tariffs for me, if I was to uh, be on Intelligent Go or regular Go for a full year, uh, Intelligent Go would be about £120 uh, cheaper for us uh, compared to regular Go. So actually that's not too bad if, we, if we're if we not able to get Intelligent Go for another year or so, I don't really mind, that would be um, okay. Uh, I'd still prefer to be on Intelligent Go of course, but this change means that regular Go is now a much more viable option for us for um, probably the, the whole of the year. So if you're on regular Octopus Go and you've got that combined with the outgoing uh, light export tariff, what do you need to do to switch that to the full fat uh, outgoing Octopus tariff at 15 pence per kilowatt hour? Um, it doesn't seem to happen automatically, so what you'll need to do is get in touch with Octopus. Uh, there are a couple of ways of doing that. Obviously, you can either call them, you can email them, but actually I found that the quickest response is actually using a direct message to their Twitter account. So go and check out um, their Twitter account uh, send the request via a direct message and they'll get back to you very quickly with the information that they require in order to switch you over. I did that and it happened within a day. Um, I had actually emailed previously but uh, I only got the response email from them several days afterwards after I'd already managed to switch mine uh, using the uh, the Twitter method. So uh, my recommendation would be to use Twitter um, X as it's now called. I refuse to call it X. It's still Twitter for me. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, do that method rather than anything else and you'll uh, you'll pretty much switch immediately. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.